www.guysnothingwire.com and we finally got our hands on the Carbon Titanium S5. It's the latest Android uh, flagship smartphone from Carbon which is an Indian manufacturer of well phones and tablets for now. So in this video we're going to show you what's in the box. We're going to uh, take a look at the hardware and see if it's worth it and then the user interface and some other bells and whistles that the company could squeeze into its flagship in about 13,000 Indian rupees. So let's go ahead. The Titanium S5 comes in a fairly you know premium looking not so small hard cardboard box yeah so you have some quick specs here some pricing information there it cost about the MRP is about 12,990 Indian rupees I'm not sure if it's available in the US right now that's the device and there you have the carbon titanium s5 we already opened the box and but I'm gonna show you what's in there anyway so first we have the device and we'll come back to it in a bit then we have a quick start guide here a warranty and service center list then you have the USB wall adapter your USB data cable here which should have a micro USB out there you see and then you have a pair of earphones there which uh, yep so there you see there you go so it has a silver plated jack and then you have your controls where they there so only the call control button and no volume rocker yeah so that's about it in the package not much not any surprises not that we expected it then there is the beautiful device the carbon titanium s5 it's very glossy and has a nice ergonomic feel to it yeah body is all plastic and it's not very rugged so you wouldn't want to drop it much the front side is very very glossy and it'll attract a lot of fingerprints you can see there already uh, it's full of fingerprints there but then the whole body has a very premium and playful look courtesy the design you know it has nice curves out there it has a you know pretty cool round edges here great to hold yeah there you see and also it has a very cool dark navy blue shade now it's almost not those bright blue colors that you usually get you usually get the smartphones in white or black blue red but then they are not as subtle as this 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 kind of stands out you almost pick it up as if it's black and then you're suddenly pleasantly surprised that it actually has a dark navy blue shade to it and it often brings a smile to you I absolutely love this color because well it's not it's not very widespread so the front side has the 5 inch IPS display you have the 2 MP front camera there some sensors you have the three uh, soft buttons here menu home and back button this side you have the volume rocker they see on the left side you have the power button yeah on the front you have the micro USB port the 3.5 mm jack below there is pretty much nothing uh, you have the hold to open the back flap the back flap is removable on the back you have the 8 MP autofocus camera accompanied by an LED flash and then it has some brandings and then your speaker grill nicely placed so let's open the back flap and show you how does it look inside by the way the s5 supports 12 sim and it's again a thin sheet of plastic so the 12 sim so sim 1 supports 3g sim 2 supports 2g 
in fact this is sim 1 and this is sim 2 actually and you have micro sd card so this guy has a built-in uh, 4 gb rom and you can have your micro sd card up to about 32 gb of capacity you have the 2000 mh battery there and you need to remove the battery to remove both the sims we would have liked at least one sim uh, to be able to hot swap so specs wise this guy is powered by a snapdragon 1.2 gigahertz quad core processor 1 gb ram uh, 4 gb internal storage as i told you it supports micro sd up to 32 gb uh, 2 mp front camera which supports it's a fixed focus camera we have to see that An autofocus 8 mp camera led flash a 2000 mh battery yeah, not so bad for 12990 okay. Check out the user interface and some of the apps now. So I'm going to switch on the device. S5 Titanium. You can see it's powered by 1.2 gig quad core processor. Android OS Jelly Bean. So this guy is powered by Android 4.1. Yeah, so there we have the lock screen. Yep, so if you pull it up, it will take you to Google now. This will unlock and this will take you to the camera. Yep. So we'll unlock it and we get to the home screen. Again, the familiar kind of a room that you see almost across all Indian manufacturer. They don't think of much with the vanilla Android room that you get on the Nexus. So yeah five home screens there there's no way of adding or removing them there's slight lag i experience but that because i guess the system is still you know trying to come up from um, the startup and watch it get stable it needs some time to get stable all system do uh, long press to add only wallpaper to add widgets you need to go to the main app drawer go to the widget menu long hole anyone and they then take you to any home page to add them yeah then you can create folder you can pull anything out of the folder to the home screen there drag any icon over another to automatically create a folder there you can also customize your app doc and have your choice of most frequently used apps here this will take you to wallpaper which you also get by long pressing on the home screen as I showed you. You can manage apps from here. But you can all also go uh, via the main settings that you can reach via your typical Android Jelly Bean settings menu. There, no Wi-Fi direct. I told you it supports 12 SIM. Yeah. So I do not have a 3G SIM on uh, SIM 1 but if you have a 3G SIM it will support 3G on SIM 1 and it will support only 2G on SIM 2. Yeah. Then you have some call settings, display, let's check out the storage. So you see it shows total space of 1.4 GB whether the specification says it's 4 GB. So the rest of the space is taken by the ROM and the um, apps, the system apps. So you have the app data again takes about 338 MB and then others take about 213 MB. So after all you only have about 884 MB available for downloaded apps and storage. So we hardly recommend that you use a micro SD card here. Go there and you can add all this. You have WeChat also integrated. Would have liked all this to be able to install or download and install from the Play Store separately because not all people might want to have these apps. And the worst thing of apps integrated into the ROM is that you can only uninstall the update but you cannot uninstall the app totally. What ROM? There you see it runs Android 4.1.2, that's the build number and stuff. Yeah notification bar here you can simply swipe it to get rid of it you have your quick function toggle bar there 
you can toggle all these icons yep, you can go to the main setting by pressing this press this to clean up the notification bar now let's check out the main app drawer so you have all these apps yeah. See, so it does not change from the vanilla android um, row much so you pretty much will see the familiar browser and other system apps yeah. you can create tabs from there there you see you can also delete any tab that you do not want yeah. and uh, you can go to settings from your your general settings then your privacy and other stuff so uh, being android jelly bean the default browser does not support flash playback so if you want to run flash content then you'll have to install the flash player manually and then use some third-party browsers like firefox for android to be able to run the flash player the camera app so it has an 8 mp autofocus camera and a 2 mp front focus so that's the camera layout there you see so you can go to settings here and uh, you can check the aspect ratio or you have some white balance settings exposure compensation scale face detection you can switch on or off you can have your grid line or not i prefer it off you have some color effect mono or you can have sepia negative solarized and other stuff hmm? anti-bending store location via gps and you have red eye reduction which i prefer switched off you can have normal speedily where it clicks uh, in a burst mode and then you have your panorama you also have your shooting mode like auto sport night and portrait and then you can have your flash switched off auto or switched on you can switch to your front camera from here there you see then toggling this guy will take you to the video recording switching from one interface to another takes some time uh, there is the gallery there you see huh? it's very sensitive yeah. so let's check out how it performs it has great shutter lag and you have to wait for some time before it's ready to click the next snap so while in video mode the max it can go is 720p you can also have 480p or VGA but it's not a full HD video recording yeah and you have file browser nothing much to show there you have FM radio that does not run without the headphones plugged in you would have liked that you have again the typical album setting that you see on the vanilla android room you can sort them according to albums locations or times they are all arranged in stacks the photos also again will be arranged in stacks you can long hold on any one to select multiple and then you can share by all means or delete or do some other stuff there yeah, same with albums so if you want to delete or share multiple albums then you can long hold on them and then select multiple albums what else you have the messaging app then the dialer yeah so you have what else music app all tabs arranged so though there is no folder app by the way yeah there you see you can go and have it as a ringtone you 
can do some equalizing or stuff fx booster and whatnot some presets out there yeah that's your music app and what else yeah so that's about the main system apps there you of course have your native google android apps like chrome or you'd have gmail hangout google plus local google settings and uh, yeah you have maps and messenger plus navigation play store all those kind of stuff you know youtube but you also have a lot of lot of third party apps and we would have liked a little less third party app on the roam because not all people like all apps you know so you have kingsoft office is a good thing because you after all need an office app and office apps are often not free so kingsoft office is one of those rare ones that is free and if probably you do not know about kingsoft office then it always help having it uh, having a productivity app on the roam but then we kind of don't understand having some other third party apps like let's say yahoo messenger you can do without it next gtv i'll survive without it paytm i'll survive without it poppy i don't even know for god's sake what it is toi wechat and some other stuffs yeah i know i mean they are indian content a lot of people would love to have them but you might want to give people options of having that and of course i understand carbon might have partnership with all these and uh, i'm not sure what what's under the hood but we would have generally like less app uh, integrated into a room because it uh, opens up more space and it also speeds up the whole thing because um, you know many of these app run in background you can of course control how many apps you would want to run in the background from here you first need to switch on the developer options because it's not for everyone so don't think around here much unless you know what you're doing so you can have no background processes one process and like that but still a lot of this app uh, runs in the background hogging your memory after all yeah so that's pretty much about the user interface 